Uptown. I'm 55 years old, 25 years in New York State Penitentiary from 1987 to 2011. Where'd you grow up at? Bronx, New York. Um, who was in the household when you was growing up? Mother, father, sister, three sisters, one brother. Were you the oldest, youngest, middle second kid? To, second to the youngest. Where did you attend school? I went through various junior high schools and elementary schools in New York, mainly known as uh, Theodore Roosevelt. And where is that at? Fordham Road, Bronx, New York. So what year would you say you started so-called breaking the law and getting into crimes? Like, how did it all start? Like, 1982. Being from Bathgate right there, 183rd and Bathgate, everything is close proximity, everything from here, drugs, everybody doing stuff. A lot of fads is coming out, gazelles, new stuff. You know, you had to be dip, you had to be fly. A lot of people was just forgetting about the school. Bathgate is in the Bronx? Yeah. Hard, hard out neighborhood in the Bronx, yeah. So this is pre the crack era also? Yeah, pre crack era. When you started breaking the law, how how did the crimes start? What Where did it start? What did it basically started like in our neighborhood, right? With uh, being that that was the center, the epic spot of the Bronx, where a lot of outsiders was coming in to go to school there from various suburbs. So we got a thing where we used to like, you know, we grew up there. We didn't use guns and all of that then. We grew up fighting. It was a knuckle game thing. So for the new ones that came into the neighborhood going to our school, you know, they would get a knuckle check, you know, and if they rocked some gazelles or something that was fly like that. And they were, and they they got chin checked, and they lost it. Then you know they lost all of that because to, to us they was outsiders anyway. They wasn't part of our neighborhood. Was they? Well, so were they gangs back then? You said this is eighty two, correct? Yeah, I'm eighty two. Yeah, we wasn't. We didn't form up like a gang, but yeah, there was various gangs known around. You know, you know the uh, five percenters, the spades, the, the black spades, seven crowns. You know, it was a lot of gangs. The disciples, Jolly Stunk was brothers out of Brooklyn. We know. But we didn't really start forming up. We never formed up into what we call a gang, gang, because it just was a group of brothers that knew each other, had the same street principles, same street ideas, and would tolerate the same less nonsense out here, and we just put it together for them that had each other's back. And we rolled on certain individuals, and this was gave us the identity that, you know, this was the Bronx, man. Roosevelt, they know about us. From what setting did you grow up in the Bronx? I grew up in a three-family house. You know, we occupied the second floor of the whole, the, the, the house. And how long did you stay there? Do oh, you remember? man, from the blackout, man, in 77. all the way up until like, I, I, I declared outlaw and, and, and operated on, a, on the fringes of the law and was apprehended back in like 82. So I figured like 83 is where it really hit hard, where they started looking at me and the criminal justice system. What were your charges that, that led you to serving 25 years in the New York State prisons? I was rolling with a couple of, a couple of crimes of mine and then um, we was, we was doing a lot of taking and taking from brothers. We graduated too there and we started using handguns and so on and so forth. And we went into a situation where we took some money from a few cats and it got a little ugly and, and the heaters came out. And when the heaters came out, 5-0 came. And at the time, 5-0, at the time they was using 38 revolvers and they jump out and talk about freeze and we know you only got six shots. And then that's whenever New York City graduated into Tech 9s and 9 millimeters. So we had shots and everything, and then he so, ended up hitting my co-defendant and killing him. And then the bullet that I hit the other guy with, his man shot and killed the cop. So the exact charges were? Murder in the second degree, manslaughter, we copped out to. Well, um, what were you sentenced to? 15 and a half to 30. 
15 and a half years to 30 as your co-defendant. And my co-defendant said had 25 years of life. So what was the first prison you were sent to in New York State? It was yeah. Elmira Reception. On total, how many prisons did you spend time in in New York? New York. Oh man, countless man. We went through. It had to be at least six or seven the max prisons in the state of New York, and quite a few mediums, man. You know, basically Comstock, Elmira, Green Haven. Shawan Lewis, places like that. I've been frequent a couple of times, Comstock, a bunch of times at Elmira, Kansaki, Attica, Clinton, Bento, you know, basically the majority of the ones that stick out. Can you tell us about what was called the 1988 experiment? And uh, 1988, I was in the Elmira population. I was in our block. Our block is formerly known as Iran. Iran was a, a block that consists of three to four hundred inmates, man, segregated into blacks and Puerto Ricans and basically, you know, different agendas and stuff like that, right? They decided, the administration in Albany, the movement of classification is to open up this prison that they call in Pine City, New York, called Southport. This was an experience that hit and rocked the New York State maximum penitentiary because they took approximately 15 to 20 inmates from every max penitentiary in the state of New York to open up what they call Southport Correctional Facility in August of 1988. I was one of the inmates that the prisoners that was actually shipped from Elmira SHU over to Southport Correctional Facility general population. And what year was that? Na August 1988. August 1988, and there was a riot at Southport in 1991, correct? Correct. After the administration realized and the state realized that the violence level just rose over 80% by this experiment because then you, you, you feel to realize you got brothers who have co-defendants who have told on each other, who have enemies, who have been in riots, who have been in constant battles with each other, have segregations and all that, and the administration took it upon itself just to put everyone together in one basket, and it caused an outbreak. And then from there, they decided that this penitentiary situation with Southport wasn't gonna work as a general population. It started out as two blocks with 750 inmates and double bunk. It was double bunk box and then a facility, and then it became a SHU, a special house. So when you say double bunk, that's two prisoners per, per room, per, per cell. cell. Exactly. Bars in the cells. Right, 250. It was 500. It was 500 per block. And it's 250 in double bunk cells. That's how it started. The fights went on for days. The stabbings went on for days. The robberies went on for days. It was out of control. So the administration decided that this wasn't going to work. 
And what they did was they shut it down and shipped all the inmates to other special housing units and so on and so forth. And then they shut it down and they made it the central SHU of New York State. Correctional facility and SHU stands for what? Special, special housing unit. Special housing unit. Okay, so that was the riot in 1991. There was a riot in that prison, correct? Yes, it was a riot. Um, do you have any um, memorable stories concerning the prison guards at the Southport prison at this new prison because it was a new prison? I met a, I met a few of them in my stay there. I actually stayed there for about maybe two and a half weeks before the riot. The actual the riot had broke out and I was there for the right. But what I have known are some of the prisons, they came with their different agendas from different geographical locations of the state. So they had a different way of manning and, and, and correction and CO and inmates and they did it in a different form. That didn't work because all of the inmates and prisoners came from different prisons. So they rebelled immediately against that. So there was a lot of fights against the prison guards and the correction officers and that subsequently landed the, the prisoner in the SHU, which the SHU had to be moved and now to be made a central one. When I was there, um, there was very few ones that we got along with and everything, and then the day that it erupted and the inmates came out of the cages and they ripped through the bar, the, the bar of the shops to get out of the cages and they took over. They had grabbed like two of the officers and they had took them up on the roof. And I guess, you know, they gave him the business or whatever the case is, and then they started making these demands, and then we ended up staying out in the yard the whole night and everything like that. Fortunately, we was left cut off on the stairs, so we was put back in our cells. And then they called in this special task force called Orange Crush. Usually these guys came from Attica. These was the ones with numbers instead of names, and they came in no nonsense, breaking heads, you know, beating people up, taking them out the cells, smacking them around, you know, handcuffing them. You was only in your underwear. Other than that, you was naked. So, and it this lasted for like about a day until the governor himself came to the facility. And it went on like that for a minute. That's Governor Pataki you're speaking of, correct? Right. The the, the 88, okay. no, the 88 riot at Southport had Governor Cuomo at the time. He was the one that came over. And the commissioner was Thomas Cochran. And they came over by way of helicopter to try to see if they can adhere to the demands and the negotiations that the prisoners was making. I mean, what was the 88 riot in, in, the, in the 1991 riots over? Who were they between and who were they over with prisoners uprising against the... Um, For a large, large part of it, it was prisoners rising up against prisoners. And what, what groups of prisoners? Any, it, any yeah, specific? because in 86, 86, the Latin Kings formulated in prison system, and they formulated, they group, and they was a bunch of Hispanic brothers, you know, whether they was Puerto Rican or whatever the case might be. And they devised a group and they stuck together. And for some strange reason, it was perpetuated by the officers to put certain ones in certain areas where it can cause conflict and mayhem. And then, of course, it started to rebel. And then the fight did break out. Were the Latin Kings involved in the 88 riot at Southport? Who was involved in that riot? Yeah, they, they, it's, it's quite a few the of Latin them. Kings again. Quite a few Latin Kings that had disputes and beefs with black brothers from two, three years ago in different penitentiaries. Yeah, they got out the cages and they got out of each other, man. You know, and it was a standoff, a free fall. They was fighting and they was cutting each other. It was, yeah, it went on. What about the 1991 riots? Were those Latin Kings also at Southport Prison? Yeah, generally they was part of every riot in the state system, even in the Attica one known to, to New York State. Were there any people that were killed while you were in, while you were in Southport for, um, prison? Were there any people killed that you can remember? Anything notable? Nah, no, there was a lot of brothers that was hurt, man, stabbed, cut, man, received multiple stitches and, and, and uh, puncture wounds and stuff like that, but not to the knowledge of anyone who was declared uh, dead on, on the site. So, of the application, no. so, so as far as the structure of the prison, because you said it was a new prison, right. and they bought 
a, a bunch of inmates, different inmates from different max prisons to right. fill it up. Mm -hmm. Was the overall how the penitentiary ran? Was it was it different than other places, or was it like yeah? Like because say, in different places, let's say take a jail like Elmira. Elmira administration was thorough with who they had in their populations. If they knew that this brother had a beef with this brother a year or two ago, they wouldn't have this brother in this facility with this brother because they know there would be some type of retaliation that would be going down. So they did a general good job of keeping people separate who was considered deemed enemies. Now, whenever the Southport experience arrived, they didn't pay mind to that. They just put them there to fill up the manpower, fill up the cells, and get the operation going. To them, it was a daily operation. And to, to little to their knowledge that it was the biggest mistake that they could ever make. So this is all going on between 1988 and 1991 at Southport Prison. That's correct. Okay, let's talk a little bit about, since we're at 91, let's go to 93. The um, explosion of the um, blood, the blood gang, what is known as the mm -hmm. blood gangs in the New York State Prison in um, can you go into a lot of little bit of that because you were already in the system when this took place, correct? So yeah. can we go back to that yeah. era a little bit? And then after, and then right after leaving the Southport experience in '91 and the ride from there, I was sent to Sing Sing because this is they was diffusing the place and sending different prisoners to different areas. So I happened to land in Sing Sing SHU, and for about five or six months. They sent me right back to Elmira general population. So this was like the end of 92, starting off in 93. So I was in general population of Elmira. And the new surgeons of the Bloods started surging coming from the city, Rikers Island, where we all frequent, you know, to make it here, you know. And, um, yeah, it's got a good few brothers that I've met, you know, Big Ed, shout out, you know, my man. You know, a lot of big, you know, a lot of brothers that I knew, Soul B, you know, my man. And um, and then it went into the state system, and then when it got into Elmira, it just, like, had no real agenda, no real anything. It was just was like mayhem on each other, mayhem on the system, the attack on the system in whole. Okay, so did you find that a lot of people were joining the blood gang for protection or because it was popular? Or, and would you say, and would you say it was structured well? What, okay, first we'll start with that. Were people joining the gang because it was popular or for protection? Only above, only above, because for so long, you know, the the black brothers population in the state penitentiary system, they didn't even have nothing that they can call family except for the family from the '80s in Elmira with the guards and so on. So when this came through, it was like a thing where you can embrace. And you considered you, you was black, you was part of that, whatever the case is. Even though they had different rules and regulations on how to become that, it still was like that. But yeah, a lot of dudes, man, who wasn't built like that, seen a perfect opportunity to join something, to have a bunch of brothers having your back, where you could still be a coward and make it through the penitentiary system without giving yourself a chance to stand up on your own too. Do you know how many um, different sets of the bloods or what is yeah. just one, one big gang? When, when it came through, sets. I was there. When it came through, I was there, man. My man, you know, my man Panther, he came through, you know, Omar. He was a good brother, man. He had a good head on his shoulder, man. But, you know, I guess a lot of us is cut from a different cut of cloth and so on. But he started giving out these hoods, man. And these hoods represented Cali, man, and the way that those brothers lived. They liked growing up, being inherited into gang thing for real. He brought something to New York that New York wasn't ready for to embrace. What was his name again? The guy it, name? Omar, man. Omar. Yeah. Omar, you know his last name? Yeah, uh, but never got to know his name. I met him in Clinton. A couple yeah, of I know him for being from the Bronx, man, from where I'm from. And like I said, I was in the penitentiary before he came over here and whatever, so I don't know if he's actually from there. I know that his brother, OG Todd, was actually a crip brother that was from out there. And, and this, you know wishy washy story with these guys, cats and anything, but at, nevertheless, he came into the penitentiary and he gave out these hoods and he gave out these hoods, 1A Trey and GKB and Valentine and these hoods that match 
these brothers that's living out there for real. Now, do you know who the leader of, of any of those sets that he gave out? Like you said, GKB and some other things. Do you know who were the leaders at the time of these things? When, you know, at its inception, like when it first started? Yeah, you know, like uh, my man, man, from Brooklyn, man, uh, Derek Steve, man. Shout out to my brother, man. That's Big Is, man. And, and what did he, what did he, he was He was actually one of the original GFs of yeah. GKB, which was the Gangsta Blood Killers, right? And when GF he, is the Godfather. Yeah, he was a GF, man. It is, man. And he put in work. He was a soldier in this game in the penitentiary way back in 85 and all of that, man. So whenever the blood thing came in, he just embraced it, man. And he was definitely an iconic soldier for this game. And they misused him and everything, and then it fell to the side. But shout out to him. He was one of the originals. And then you know, so be, you know, my man, you know, he know we've been through some things and Mike is Allen, I know him, Stacy, you know, I know what's good with you, man. So be, be yo, you know, and he was an iconic influence to this game, man. And they, they were so going so far straight with all these good brothers that I named to you and so on and forth. There was very little they could do to try to bring this back home to where it really needed to be because with brothers without a sense of direction roam around without a purpose and in the world within the world, man, it becomes mayhem and destruction. And that's what it did. You know, Dizzy, my man, you know, 1A Trey, the big homie, man, Dizzy, he from the Bronx, we grew up together. That was my man. Things got campaigned against him. It went astray. But these was good brothers who paid blood, sweat, and tears in Rikers Island in 93 and came on up into the state and gave brothers something to hold on to, to grasp, to say that this is your own, this is your your blood, this is that. It was a lot of misleading, misguided, misinformation that led brothers astray. And when that went astray, the whole thing just went mayhem and corrupted the whole New York State Correctional Facility. Did you join any gangs in prison? Absolutely not, man. I've been feeling... One D. In 86 and 87, the guard body, I always had knowledge of self, so I've been having knowledge of self, man, ever since like 81, 82, you know. So I know why I am in the guard body movement in the state penitentiary was very strong, such as the Muslims, such as the Trinitarians, such as the, um, you know, the Rat Hunters, and you know, so on and so on, organizations. No, I never joined a gang or clicked anything because I had my own agendas and I do my own thing. So that didn't mix well with someone telling me how and when to orchestrate what I did and how I did my time, you know. So I never participated in them. But I do know and I frequent a lot of the brothers who were considered the generals or the isolated leaders of these organizations and so forth throughout my whole stay. So have you ever had any problems with any gangs in the prison, whether it was the Five Percenters, the Muslims, and the Yattas, the Aryan Nations, et cetera? Yeah, et cetera. man, you're gonna have, you're gonna have conflict. Hey, I was dealing with a Muslim kid in Clinton and he was my neighbor, right? We had a good understanding of what I did and what he did. We was two separate worlds and I respected him. He was supposed to respect me. When we got the TVs and everything, and they gave a few programs in there that the brothers enjoyed. One was the Red Shoe Diary. That would come on every Friday night. It was a channel. You turn on, throw up your curtain, and you would get to see naked women and so on and so on. We met. We've been in penitentiary. We enjoyed that, man, for the period of time that it came on TV. Happened to be this cat next door to me is looking at all the Short Eye magazines, all of the Buttman magazines, and on the low and everything. And then he filed a complaint to the administration saying that that channel was constricted to their dean and so forth and so on. And with their influence in the penitentiary, it caused the administration to, to yank that program. It yanked that program and it made a lot of brothers angry. So that's why you had a problem with the Muslim brothers in jail. Yeah, that, that and the hypocrisy, yeah. That and the hypocrisy. Have you had any problems with any other gangs, races, organizations, religious? Yeah, anything? you know, the, the Latinos, man, because they purchase, you know, a product or something that you produce and they feel that they're bigger than thou. And so you go through things. Yeah, I went through a few incidents with some of the, the Latin Kings. The Latin guys. Kings, anyone else? Yeah, you know, there's some Monchadellos, man. There's some Mexican dudes and, and stuff like that. What's your problem with them? Yeah, they, they, they didn't like black people. And they definitely don't like black people that can speak and understand Spanish.
Any other any other factions? No, friends? that you know that and my running with the Bloods and so on and so forth. But fortunately, I was able to know a lot of the really big shot callers in the state that were blood. So they eliminated a lot of the transgressions. Okay, there. tell me um a little bit about Sing Sing prison. What year were you in Sing Sing? Oh, a couple of times. Roughly, like the '94. I was in Sing Sing in 92, 94, and like 95. 92, yeah, 1992 to 94? Yeah, 92 to 94, yeah. Okay, yeah. that was your stint, your only stint in Sing Sing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, anything memorable about Sing Sing you care to share? Like any stories with the guards, any riots? Yeah, any... it was a free movement population, man. And you can get any and anything you wanted. It was, it and was. you say free movement, what do you mean? No cells? Yeah, it was people was in cells and so forth, but the movement wasn't constricted in there, man. You was just able to go where bell rang and you can go to where you from. You can get down the hill. You can travel down the top hand, which was down the hill. You can run into your brothers, man. Their brothers are selling weed. Anything you wanted, you can get. You can get down with the emergency sick call wing. The nurse had a, 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 a thing going on where nurses was prostituting off of inmates and it was by way of disbursement forms and it was all notable all this was a matter of record and a lot of things was going on and accessible to brothers who was doing time sing sing was the place to be see i see i was speaking on that because you know it seems like the prisons that are closer to new york city have more going on, you know, yeah, because you have a different caliber of prison guards there, correct? So, That's correct. with Sing Sing being 45 minutes and the other thing being 380 miles probably, which would probably take about six, seven Five, hours. Yeah, I was yeah, yeah, something like that to get there. Rather, what crews, what organizations, what gangs were there? Not who ran it, because I know that, a. It was the Muslim had a heavy, pop strong population there, community down there with the Muslims, and they was in tight with the administration, so they got a lot of things going on, like festivals and put on things for the inmate population. But uh, you always had the uh, gangs in the yards, man, from the sectors to the bloods to the cribs to the everybody, man. And so pretty much all gangs that exist in New York prisons are in all prisons. Of course, yeah. with populations being different, some places I take it have more, you know, of one than the other. Yeah, right. So that's understandable. So um, is the layout in Sing Sing similar to Southport as Absolutely far as the housing, the housing and how not. you move? Absolutely not, man. You What's the difference? You compare the Sing Sing as to being out here in a hotel compared to being... And Southport, man, with the lock-in, the cells is built and designed to hold you in there for 23 hours a day, Southport. When Southport was started, was constructed as a program, it was considered the maxi-max of New York State. So it was built like a level six prison. Okay. Local okay, six prison versus had, Sing Sing, which is an old and old one of the oldest prisons in the state of New York, but it became one of the most lenient because it's the closest in geographical location to New York City. And mostly all the officers that start there are either young blacks or young Hispanics or young whatever, but they are from that general geographic right there. Okay, so the layout of Sing Sing is different from. Um, like you said, Southport had two man cells, correct? Right. Sing Sing, what was the living quarters like there? Dorms? They, they, no, they was all single cells, and then whenever the double cells started, that was a statewide thing. So Sing Sing did have cells. They rebelled against the double cell thing, but eventually they did. And they had a few blocks. They had a few cells, like 20, 30 cells that was double bunk, but that created another problem. Of course, yeah. with populations being different, some places I take it have more you know, of one than the other. Yeah, right. So that's understandable. So um, is the layout in Sing Sing similar to Southport as Absolutely far as the housing, the housing and not. how you move? Absolutely not, man. You What's the difference? You compare the Sing Sing as to being out here in a hotel compared to being in Southport, man, with the lock-in. 
The cells is built and designed to hold you in there for 23 hours a day, Southport. When Southport was started, was constructed as a program, it was considered the maxi max of New York State. So it was built like a level six prison. Level okay, six prison versus had Sing Sing, which is an old and old one of the oldest prisons in the state of New York, but it became one of the most lenient because it's the closest in geographical location to New York City. And mostly all the officers that start there are either young blacks or young Hispanics or young whatever, but they're from that general geographic right there. Okay, so the layout of Sing Sing is different from, um, like you said, Southport had two man cells, correct? Right. Sing Sing, what was the living quarters like there? Dorms? They, they, no, they was all single cells, and then whenever the double cells started, that was a statewide thing, so Sing Sing did have cells. They rebelled against the double cell thing, but eventually they did, and they had a few blocks. They had a few cells, like 20, 30 cells. It was double bunk, but that created another problem. Um, another question concerning Southport, roughly, these answers are just roughly, how many inmates were in Southport prison, roughly? How is that once? At its capacity, let's just say that. What is the 750 system? inmates. And how many at Sing Sing? How many, how, many, how many prisoners would you say Sing Sing had? About maybe 1,200. So Southport had 750 prisoners. Right. Sing Sing, 1,200. With 1,200, yeah, because it's... It's a smaller population, and the design was marquee for a, a, a different demand of prisoner, a problem type prisoner, a prisoner that that they couldn't get along the population, a prisoner who was an influence on people like leaders of these gangs and so on. This was designed and built for them, but the money that was spent in it was too widespread. It's not that many gangsters that was running around doing that. It was actually a freelance thing, so they decided to put all the people in there who became a problem with the administration to fill up to fill up the jail occupancy. Okay. They prepped you and they got you ready within the next hour or two, man, you was into general population. So, at, just speaking of Southport and Sing Sing, we'll get to other penitentiaries who you mm -hmm. was in a little bit later. Are there any cases that you knew of drugs coming into the prison by way of guards and what kind of drugs were they supplying, if any? Yeah, there was a lot, a little bit of all of us. All of us, man. I mean, a little guilty of myself, you know. We had to live. We had to do what we had to do, man. So we make a wheels and wheels away. I, I knew the, I knew the, the utensils and facilities, how to do it. I did it. But, yeah, there was a few guards who saw it. That was really cool from our neighborhood. Grew up, raised in our neighborhoods. And seeing opportunities and bringing little things through to give the certain individuals, man, to make their resources a little bit better. Sure, that existed all over the board, everywhere. But, and, pro, and, and both at South, um, the difference I'm asking is between Southport and Sing Sing, because I know the proximity of, that you mentioned of Sing Sing to New York City. So, you know, the city, the city has it all. So would you say there was more drugs and sex involved in prison guards with inmates in Southport or Sing Sing? Or equal. No, so you can't use Southport as as a depot for what really population is really about. You may you may just want to use the Elmira, which would be the adjacent uh, maximum penitentiary, or you may use any max around that. Southport was designed and designated for something different. There was not a lot of that activity going on in that jail because it was strictly designed for one hundred percent security. Gotcha. Um, Opposed to Elmira, where... Let's go into Elmira. Oh, now, see, now you got a different breed of officers, man, and they was calling themselves family, and they was part of different types of families. And within them families, man, you'll find one or two officers who is down to break the law. How, when, um, how long were you... Um, when were you at Elmira, if you can remember? I went, Roughly. Through, I went through Elmira from 87 through periods of 88, 89... Back in 89, then I went to Comstock in 90, then 91. From there to Elmira, back to there. Like maybe five, so, six times. So you've been to Elmira in and out? In and out of Elmira. Why, why in and out of Elmira versus other prisons? Why? 
it's 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 you 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 just get transferred because of something that happened at another facility. But why transfer back there? They'll just send you wherever it was space available, providing that you fit the criteria for the jail. Mm. If you fit the criteria for the jail, you go back to the same one you left. So Elmira is a max. It is a max. What would be the difference from Elmira than Sing Sing to Southport? That are uh, you might got an enemy in, in Sing Sing, and everybody know that's closer to New York City, and you're African American, and you know that your visit count will go up if you was to move to Sing Sing opposed to you being in Elmira. So they'll check you out and see if you fit the credential. How, how um, roughly how many people are in, uh, in Elmira? Versus the 750 at 12 Southport and was the 1200. It's about 12, 1300 in Elmira too. And what's the um, the um, layout like? Like is it cells and divided into homes? blocks and blocks is divided into cells. It's How like, many men in a cell? It's about it's they they got a few double bunks. There's double bunks in there. I don't know now if they outlawed and took all the double bunks out, but it was enough for 400 men per block. I heard someone from New York State mention. Benny the Butcher, actually, the rapper, mentioned he was in prison. He was in a three-man cell. And he's from Buffalo, New York, so I'm not sure if that was maybe a county jail. Or it might have been a county up there somewhere in Buffalo because New York State Penitentiary was fighting against double bunk, man. I, I doubt very seriously if he was ever in the triple bunk, man. No. So have you ever seen any triple bunk never, cells? Never, never. Um, well, can you tell me about Elmira as far as, you know, this, um, same thing like, um, you know, organizations that were there that were, pop well, we know they were all in every prison, but was there anything, um, that stands out to you about Elmira? Like, you know, it may be heavy in Aryan Nation here because it's upstate. Or what was, what was the layout of Elmira pretty much? It was pretty it? much heavy with Latinos against blacks, man, in the, in the early, late 80s. So Latinos were the dominant gang at... Yeah. Yeah, at Elmira, at everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere in the penal system in, in the New York State? In in New York State, everywhere. So is there anything um, notable or memorable you want to tell us about, um, Ran about into Elmira? Ran, yeah, there was there was a lot of riots up in there. There was a lot of racial riots that went down in there. Years. But Elmira was one of the places where if you can somehow sidestep that and avoid that confrontational part of the bid, you can actually do a decent bid, man, and in hopes of working your way to going home. When, when you say confrontational part of of Elmira to avoid what? Elaborate on that? Yeah, the running with the prisoners, the getting into the beefs, the getting into the night fights, getting into the things. Why at Elmira? While you at Elmira, you know, because it's very easy, man. If you're not programming and you're not having an agenda where I'm working, I'm doing this job, I'm doing this, or I'm going to school, I'm doing that, and you're just playing the yard every day, and you're bound to get into a confrontation with somebody to land you up in the box, which we call that's at you. So, you know, from there, your bid starts to spiral now backwards instead of you rolling forward to get up out of there. You're working on your way, how you going to stay in there longer. And you're going to get into a confrontation like that because the misery love company, and that was the devil's playground. Anything notable about an L... Myra prison concerning most segregated prison in the state of New York, where the police perpetuate. What, what that. was the what was the situation? Was there any situations where um, inappropriate relationships, like sex with guards, or anything you can remember memorable concerning drugs in that prison? Not in no, Myra, no. Because you did mention a riot. You did mention right, the riot not in, in Elmira. Elmira. Yeah, it was the riot in Elmira. Yeah, all the females that was ever employed at Elmira, the inmates actually would, could be around and had access to, were homely like farm girls and all of that. No one, they wasn't desirable no matter how long you've been in the penitentiary. That wasn't a geographical place for that. The drug thing was the individuals who happened to be residing in those areas around Elmira, horseheads, Bingleton, Big Flax, Corning, Utica, Ithaca, places like that. They happen to be prisoners now in Elmira, but they lived right outside of Elmira. So you're saying locals from New York State mm -hmm. that live near prisoner, live near the prison in the towns, the little towns which fuel the economies, of course, right, which right. we know um, in these towns, they ended up becoming prisoners, correct? Mm -hmm. That's 100% correct. And from there... 
They know people and they all grew so up with each other. Guards. So they know the guards, they know everybody, the police, the sheriffs, everything. So now they have to be in a penitentiary and they need a half a pound of weed or they need a couple of scalpels or they need a couple of rug cutters or they need whatever they need. And these were primarily Caucasian. Yeah, we went into one or two whites, man, but they was raised up in those the hick neighborhoods that I named. So they basically just black skin, you know what I'm saying? Black black mass, but they had a different whole different agenda mentality. So when you say when you say black mass, were these were these white guys, black guys? Black right? guys, man, but so black guy, outlook, black, outlook was, was white mentality. Black so so we're talking about black men from upstate New York upstate from New York. near these small towns where these prisoners are located exactly. ended up being prisoners in these prisons. Committing various crimes, right? Yeah, so you. they ended up in these prisons mm -hmm. and they were able to get drugs bought in and have special favors because they were from up there. Exactly. And their mentalities were white, although they was black guys. Right, but they blended in with us and then they, their mentality slowly started to sway towards them the way New York City prisoners were doing. You know, and then they got with the program and then it got hot, so it got shut down, so a lot of things went crazy AY. But at the time, they was the one with the access to the resources. And at the time, marijuana was heavily needed and heroin was heavily needed in the penitentiary. And that was a demand, and that's what was being bought and pumped into there. Okay, and that was Elmira. Elmira. And that was from what year to what year again? Yeah, I, I was there from 87. Through 80, 88 with the Southport back there, then in 89 I was there again, and then I was there in 94 again, and then, you know, so, but that was the history, that's the history of Elmira, it never changed. Okay, let's um, go into Clinton Prison, do you know what, when you yeah. were in Clinton Prison? Yeah, 97, 90, end of 96, 97 was my Clinton experience, that was, they called the Dan Amora experience. I was brought there because of an incident that derived in uh, Kate Vincent, where the officer was, you know, uh, allegedly poisoned, and I had a charge, and I went to court for it, and I and I ended up getting time to it. But serving SHU time, I was transported to Clinton Correctional SHU, and in that place where where they showed me what the real penitentiary was about. Because so, so in Clinton Prison, a uh, guard was poisoned. How? Well, Kate Vincent, a guard was poisoned, and Kate Vincent. And in his Kate mother, Vincent is what? Uh, it was a medium correctional facility that was not too far from Clinton Correctional. Okay. And uh, they uh, said that it was put uh, some type of floor stripper or some other type of agent, agent into his coffee drinking mug and he ingested it and he went into convulsions and he had to be hospitalized. They, they said a prisoner did that? Yeah. And how did you get involved in that? Because a bunch of inmates that, that, that decided that they wanted to formulate a story and use my name and these quote unquote snitches they gave my name up to the administration with the record that I had in the penitentiary we made it easy for the police to believe that it might have been me so I was a time target uh, time prime subject in that I was I was locked up in the SHU, and I faced criminal charges for that incident. And I was in Clinton. Uh, Kate Vincent, correct. Kate Vincent, Kate right. Vincent, correctional. In nineteen ninety seven, right. So, did you spend any time in Clinton? Yes, Clinton. I was immediately transported from Kate Vincent Correctional Facility in ninety seven to Clinton Correctional Facility SHU Unit fourteen in ninety seven. And how long did you spend at Clinton? Oh, I man, I might have been in Clinton for like about a year and a half, close to two years. So is there any memorable stories concerning, you know, inmate with in inappropriate relationships, drugs, or any notable riots? or anything A lot of, a, a lot of things. That was another world. 
that was a world within another world. You know, when my experience with that, when I got in there, man, was that I was an SHU, that was a 24-hour lock-in, special housing unit, limited things in your cell and all of that. And the sergeant that I met was Sergeant Maynard, man, and he came to me, he was the mayor down the mall, and he gave me an opportunity to get out the cell and do some porter work where you didn't have to be in the cell all day long. And yeah, various things go on around in there, man, and that throughout that jail, because it was different, it was closed off, they never allowed new media in there, drugs was being bought in and out of the facility, it was like, no real prostitution rings went on in that place, because Dan Amore was a way up north, state up north, but the yeah, things that Dan Amore is the town. Right, Dan Amore is the town that, that, that lives and eats off of the Clinton Correctional Facility. You know, I think the population of Dan Amore may be about 75, <coughs> 7,500 there, people. There was a case out of New York State, something about Dan Amore and the, the Lady Guard. Were you there for that? No, no, but I heard about the escape plot, man. The brothers, they worked the tailor shop, and they worked the woman there in the tailor shop, and they had her, and she got on board with them and helped assist them in the escape plot, and they went and led the police on a long hunt for them. But, um... When I was there, man, I never seen anything remotely close to anybody getting up out of there, man. That was a plot to win. Out of Clinton Correctional, man. Their security was wow. like like ironclad, man. Yeah, once you walk in there, man, the door behind you closed, man. There was no going back, man.